What's going on guys? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the video. Um, today we just got kind of a quick, shorter video planned today, um, but I'm gonna start this video off by playing a uh, chest, uh, shoulder, and bicep that I went through today. I'm gonna play that workout here in a little bit, and after that, I'm gonna go through the video addressing some of the most common uh, myths or misconceptions that I personally come across and are just spread throughout the entire uh, fitness industry. So I kinda wanna address the truth behind those, um, and help you guys stray away from all the confusion and misconceptions that you can potentially get involved in. Um, so I'm going to play this workout clip right here. Hope you guys enjoy that. And I'll see you guys in a little bit going over some of these common myths. All right, guys. So today for the commentary, um, I'm doing a pushing workout. I'm doing a chest, shoulder, and bicep workout. Um, and normally, I'd go over every little thing that I'm doing in my workout and kind of show you why I'm doing that. Um, but today I thought that I'd kind of talk about how I personally structure my workouts and how I personally believe most people should design their workouts when they're in the gym. <clears throat> so to kind of start things off, whether you're training back, chest, or legs, you should always start your workout off with some sort of a warm-up. Um, that's just so your body is loose and ready to go. I personally like uh, walking or running on the treadmill for like five to seven minutes. Um, you can do some sort of a dynamic warm up to make sure your joints are nice and loose and everything like that. Or you can do some maybe pre activation exercises. Um, but that's how I personally believe you should always start your workout for the day. Now, once you're all ready to go and you're warmed up, um, you should always start your workout with a compound movement and sometimes two compound movements. Um, for example, for your chest day, you would either start your workout off with some sort of a bench press or an incline press, whether that's with a barbell, dumbbells. Um, you don't really want to start your workouts off with accessory movements. So if we're talking chest, you, an accessory movement would be uh, like a chest fly of some sort or maybe like a chest press machine. You should always do your compound movements first because those are your main movements. They're your building blocks for your body and your strength. These are the movements you want to um, try and focus on progressive overload and try and get stronger on either in weight or reps each week. Um, so for your back day, maybe that's your weighted pull-ups or lat pull-downs or some form of a barbell row. Or for legs, that's most likely going to be your squat or some sort. I see so many people and they go into the gym and they neglect to focus on the key compound movements, which are either a bench press of some sort, a squat, deadlift, or a weighted pull-up, then they focus so much on um, the machines. And sometimes, you know, they're because they don't have anyone to spot them, but reality, you just need to be safe and know your limits. So you don't put yourself in a situation that can hurt yourself. Um, and try and avoid starting your, don't be that guy in the machine that does He's afraid to train legs, so he never does squat, or he uses the excuse to use a Smith machine because he doesn't have a spotter to spot him for bench press. Just know your limits and be safe with it, and you'll be completely fine. So then after I start my workout off with a compound, I usually do actually two compounds to hit the two major groups of whatever muscle group I'm training. Um, but after that, I go down to um, my accessory movements. And in my compound movements, I usually do anywhere from – three to five working sets where I rest roughly three to four minutes in between each set because my main goal for my compounds is to focus on strength, allow myself much more time to rest. But once I get into my assessor movements, that's when I'm focusing on all the other maybe like little nitty gritty muscle groups. Um, and these, these work, these exercises are usually a lot less taxing on my body. Um, so therefore I'm going to have a lot more volume, try and get a good pump and get blood flow to my body. So here I can rest anywhere from two minutes to 30 seconds. It's usually a lot more fast paced. So my workout will start out relatively slow. And as I continue on through the workout, it really ramps itself up. Um, but don't overdo it on your accessories. Most of the time, just hit your basic muscle groups that you are working for the day. Um, do your compounds for that and then do maybe a few accessories for that um, and hit your other muscle groups. Um, I'm not really a fan of training one muscle group for the entire day. So for example, when I train my chest, I always include um, some sort of a shoulder movement as well as either a bicep or tricep. Um, when I do my back, I either include a bicep or tricep or maybe even traps. Um, and your legs, you either train you know, your glutes, your quads, hamstrings, calves. There's several muscle groups for each kind of section of your body. So make sure you include um, just a little bit of everything within a certain workout. Um, and 
I feel like this kind of is really random and I just kind of went on and on. Um, but hopefully you kind of took something from this. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, guys. So whenever you're first getting into working out or if you've been in the working out for a long time, you're always going to hear people coming up with these um, very common statements or themes that you may see, such as um, no carbs past 6 p.m. You have to only you have to eat a protein within 10 minutes after you work out. Um, high reps for building for losing weight, high, low reps for building muscle. You're gonna hear tons of stuff like this. So, without further ado, the first myth and misconception I'm gonna bring up is that you need to drink protein or get protein in your system within a minute of training. People, I see people all the time. They're like, "Oh, I gotta get my protein and shake right after I work out. Right after I work out." Um, I can't wait more than 20 minutes, otherwise I'm gonna lose all my gains. No, the reality is, as long as you're focusing throughout your entirety intake of protein um, and intake of food throughout the entire day, it's not gonna matter if you hit your protein within 10 minutes after training. Um, you can go within a few hours after your training without eating anything and still be fine. Um, sure, it's gonna be good for your body if you get protein in within 10 minutes of it, but it's not gonna do any more benefit or have any more benefit to it versus you going to eat um, a protein dense meal an hour or two later. Um, personally, there's times when I go to the gym and I won't eat for three hours after the, after the gym. Obviously, um, I prefer to eat within an hour after the gym, usually just because within 20 minutes of training, I get pretty hungry. So ideally, I like to eat a meal or get some protein in after I train. Um, but the crazy reality of it is as long as you focus on hitting your calories, hitting your proteins, hitting your fats, hitting your carbs throughout the entire day, and you stay consistent with that, it shouldn't matter at all if you hit your protein right after your training. It's not going to magically give you more muscle or you're not going to lose your gains if you don't get protein in your system, um, within five minutes after training. That's just, that's it. It's no big deal. Okay, so tip number two. This one, it's a kind of a personal favorite of mine just because it kind of drives me crazy. Like, I, it's, I mean, it's not people's fault for thinking this. Lots of people are just new or they hear certain things. But this tip is you need to train high reps in order to tone down or low reps in order to build size and muscle. This, this is complete bull crap, um, in my opinion. What determines if you lose body fat or build muscle is your intake of food and the amount of protein, carbs, and fats you have into your system. Um, high reps and low reps honestly do nothing. In terms of lifting, I personally recommend, and lots of other people personally recommend, that you need to have a balance of reps. You need to incorporate some lower reps with heavy weight, but then also some higher volume, high reps within your weight. Um, typically, lower reps, um, they work more so anywhere from... Uh, one to five reps on the rep scale typically works best for strength and anywhere in between um, six to 12, even up to 15, 20 reps um, typically work best for muscular hypertrophy, but that doesn't determine whether or not you build size or lose body fat. Um, what determines if you tone down or build muscle or size is your diet. Obviously, in order to lose weight, I've addressed this a thousand times before, we need to be in a calorie deficit, eating less calories than our body burns throughout the day, um, and obviously making sure our macronutrients are on point. And in order to gain weight or muscle, we need to be eating in a calorie surplus or eating more calories than our body burns throughout the day. Um, and like I just said, making sure your macronutrients are on check as well. Um, but that's about all I got to say for point two. Um, so if someone tells you you need to train high reps to tone down or low reps to build muscle, just put that out the window. Don't listen to that. That's, it's, it's not the truth. Okay, so tip number three. Um, I see this one all the time. It's really big and like social media and everything like that. And this one is if you eat past a certain time, you've all heard the saying carbs past 6 p.m. or eating past 6 p.m., it's gonna make you more fat. No, really, it doesn't make you more fat. What makes you fat is eating in a calorie surplus. So eating, like I mentioned before, more calories than your body burns. It doesn't matter if you eat calories. You can eat, sometimes I'll eat at 11 o'clock at night or I'll eat at six o'clock at night. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm in a calorie deficit throughout the entire day from when I wake up to when I go to bed, I'm gonna be losing weight. Vice versa, if I'm in a calorie surplus from when I wake up to go to bed, 
I'm going to gain weight. Now, obviously you might have some instances, and this happens to me all the time, when you wake up after eating in a calorie deficit and your weight rises. Lots of times when we eat later at night, our body is still digesting our food when we wake up. Um, therefore, we're going to have more food volume inside of us. So it's going to say a different weight on the scale. But just because a scale says a different weight doesn't mean you've actually gained body fat. All it says is just there's still food in your system that your body is digesting. Therefore, you have a little bit more weight to your body. Um, so what I personally recommend is just to be consistent with everything. It's just another one of those things. Consistency is kind of key in the whole fitness industry. Um, just try and eat stop eating relatively around the same time every day. Obviously, we're all human. It's not gonna happen every day. We're gonna, we go out on weekends, we're out later at certain times of the day. Um, but just for a general rule, um, I personally like to, and it should be helpful for you, just um, kind of stop your eating point throughout a certain time in the day. And that's just gonna make sure you're waking up and your weigh-ins or morning weigh-ins are gonna stay consistent. Um, but eating past a certain time period doesn't make you any more fat at all. It, what makes you fat is eating in a calorie surplus throughout the day. Time period doesn't really matter. Okay, so this one is probably the one of the biggest ones you'll ever see. That is anything like carbs, fats, fast food, so things like McDonald's or Chipotle or Taco Bell or whatever it is, they give you more body fat and they make you fat. No, that's that's not the truth. I I personally eat majority healthy foods, whole foods. I cook for myself a lot. But there's plenty of times when I'll go out with friends or something like that and we'll go get McDonald's. We'll go to, I'll get a big, huge burrito at Chipotle. I'll go out and eat fast food. I'll go to Five Guys, get a big burger. It doesn't make you any more fat because, or it doesn't make me any more fat because I keep that within my daily calorie limit and macronutrient limit for the day. Um, what makes you fat? Eating in an excess amount of calories and macronutrients is what makes you fat. Obviously, you're not going to just generally you're not going to feel the best after eating fast food just because there's a lot of um, chemicals um, and processed ingredients and GMOs that you might encounter through those. So overall, you're just not going to feel the best. But as long as you keep your calories and everything in check, it's not going to get you any more fat. Eating 2000 calories um, worth of McDonald's is going to have the exact same effect versus eating 2000 calories of chicken, rice, in a home cooked meal. It's the exact same thing. Obviously you're gonna feel better if you eat the home cooked meal just cause it's gonna be healthier for you, uh, more natural whole food ingredients versus the processed foods. But it's gonna have the exact same effect in terms of body composition and uh, fat percentage. So don't worry about that. Keep focus on your total calorie limit for the day and macronutrients and obviously eat majority healthy whole, healthy whole foods um, just because you're gonna feel better, be able to perform better in the gym. So tip number five that I have or misconception number five that I have is about intermittent fasting. Um, personally, I enjoyed kind of looking into this one is because personally, I intermittent fast on a daily basis every day. Um, I'm not going to get into why I do that. I just, it personally just makes me feel better. I like when I'm fasted, I'm more focused. I like to train fasted and that's that. But this common misconception and theme that I always hear when people ask me about intermittent fasting, you're like, oh, no wonder you're so lean. You do intermittent fasting that magically gets rid of your body fat, fasting and saving your food to later on in the day makes you lose more body fat and it taps into your fat resources. That's not the truth. I intermittent fast and why intermittent fasting is so great is because it helps you adhere to, to your diet. Um, personally, I, it's much easier for me to save my food until later in the day than eating small amounts of food from when I wake up all the way to when I go to bed. Personally, I eat two big meals within normally a six hour eating window throughout my day. So, um, Within that six hours, that's a lot of food that I have to consume. So therefore, I'm gonna feel more, feel more full, satisfied, and I'm gonna be able to stick to my diet. Why so many people get great results in intermittent fasting and maybe lose a lot of weight or gain a lot of muscle is because they can stay consistent to their diet and hit their calorie goals and their macronutrient goals um, because fasting allows them to eat big and enjoyable meals um, because you're saving your food for one time period. Um, it's not, it's not, just because you see people eating those big meals, they're still keeping their calories and macros the same as they would if they're eating a normal, conventional um, breakfast, lunch, dinner with snacks in between diet. Um, just, it's the time period, that's all that's different. Nothing, nothing magical about intermittent fasting, it just helps you adhere to your diet. 
So this last uh, misconception I'm going to go over, and don't get me wrong, there's plenty more misconceptions. These are only just a handful that I'm going over. But this last one is that cardio makes you lose body fat or cardio makes you lose your gains. Um, I'm just going to go over this real quick. All cardio is in terms of body composition is a form of physical activity to help you burn calories. It doesn't do anything for you within gaining or losing muscle or specifically burning fat. All it does is it burns calories. For example, if you're, if you're cutting down trying to lose body fat and you're eating low calories and your weight stalls. So in order to keep progressing and losing body fat when your weight stalls, you have to eat less calories throughout the day. So instead of reducing your calories by say 300 more calories to therefore keep losing weight, instead of reducing your calories, you could go and burn 300 more calories a day by doing a form of cardio. Um, that, that way you don't have to reduce your food intake at all. So in terms of body composition, obviously I'm not getting into the whole athletic point and heart health of cardio. Um, obviously it's very good for your heart. It's very good for you and just in general, but it doesn't make you lose any more body fat. All it does is burns calories. You can be doing cardio every single day and not lose a bit of body fat if you're eating too many calories. So purely I just use cardio as a tool to help me burn calories. So therefore I can eat more food throughout the day and it comes in very handy when you're trying to get um, to a lower body fat level. Um, and it doesn't make you lose your gains. What makes you lose your gains is eating in too little calories and not eating enough protein or not training your muscles properly. That's what makes you lose your gains. Um, don't think that cardio does. Just use it as a tool to burn calories or obviously if you're an athlete or just straight up enjoy doing forms of cardio, that's great, it's great for you. Um, but just don't think it's gonna make you lose any more body fat than anything else. Um, but yeah, so that's about all I've got for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this and maybe took something from it. But other than that, please like, subscribe, and like always, let me know if you have any questions about anything. I'd love to help you guys out. So have a good day, guys. Peace.